We want to welcome you to today's broadcast of Be Healed. Now, this is specifically and also generally uh, teaching concerning healing and also to teach you how to receive your healing and to be able to pray for you to get you healed even if you're not here. So we want to welcome everyone that is uh, watching us by internet or later on watching by DVD or listening by MP3 or any of those other formats. And so we want to welcome you and we're going to get right into the word today. The, one of the main things that um, <clears throat> actually yesterday we taught in our Sunday service here at Dominion Life on how to receive from God. And we're not going to teach that today. We've already taught it. I'm sure we'll teach it again at some point. But there are always little peripheral things that tend to hinder people from being able to receive for themselves. Now, there's two basic ways to receive healing. One is you get in the Word of God, you know God, you walk with God, you know His uh, thoughts, his opinions concerning healing, and you learned how to receive healing on your own. The second, of course, is to find someone that understands healing and wants to and, and is able to minister healing and to be able to get you healed by the laying on of hands or other methods that they may use. So there's two ways to receive healing. One is by your own faith or one is through the faith of someone else. Many times people don't think that they have enough of their own faith so they purposely look for other people to get it for them. Uh, that's fine. That's not where we want you to stay. But we, the main thing is we want you healed. We want you free because God wants you free and he wants you healed. And so we're working with him. So we are willing to minister to you, pray for you, lay hands on you, uh, get you healed so that then you can spend your time studying the word of God and getting uh, healing to be a revelation to you, to, to a, a reality, I should say. I don't like using the word revelation a lot because people always think of, the, of a revelation or getting a revelation as some wispy thing that comes at some point, and it, that, that's not it. Revelation is simply reading, seeing, and understanding the Word of God and then putting it into practice. That's really all it means. Uh, God has revealed everything we need concerning life, concerning health and healing and holiness and godliness. He's revealed it to us in his word. And so uh, we want to be able to minister to you, but we want to give you, once we get you healed, we want to give you time so that you can study healing so that you'll be able to give it to someone else because you know and are absolutely convinced that it is God's will. So, uh, during these sessions, we're trying to explain to you and to teach you how to receive it for yourself. Because many people watching by internet are not able to get here into the uh, headquarters church here at uh, Dominion Life here in, in Dallas, Texas. And so we want to be able to get you healed where you are. One of the best ways to do that, of course, is to get you to understand the connection that you have directly with God. Because Christianity was meant to be a direct connection between you and Jesus and therefore a direct connection to God himself. But most people do not have faith in their connection with God, so they want to rely on someone else's faith, as I said. So we're trying to get you to understand God loves you. He, he wants you well. He has good thoughts towards you. His, his plans, his ideas about you are good. They're not bad. They're, they're not... Uh, suffering and surgeries and medicines and all these kind of things. His thoughts towards you is that you live in peace, that you live in health, that you live walking with him. And so we want to talk a little bit about that today. So to show these and to bring these two things together, I'm going to take you uh, to several scriptures actually, but the two I want to start with, and if you have your Bibles, so you can turn with me to the book of Hebrews. And there are two scriptures. Number one, and this is one, if you were around back in the old uh, tent revival days and back in the voice of healing time, uh, you would have seen this banner in almost every uh, healing ministry's tent at some point. Jack Coe had one, A. Allen had one, William Branham had one. They all had the same scripture up over their tent, usually up over their platform, and so it, because it is just so solid and so good to know, and that is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews 13, 8, which is very simple. It just simply says this, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Now that 
if you, you know, you could take time just to focus on that scripture, just to dwell upon it, meditate upon it, say it out loud to yourself, and just think about it, and just think deeply on it. Don't just gloss over it, but take time to go into it, and realize that it is saying that Jesus Christ, not, not, not just any Jesus, you understand. There's a lot of people with the name of Jesus, 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 I mean, it's all over. It's not just any Jesus. We're talking about Jesus the Christ. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. That means in his basic nature, in his basic characteristics, he never changes. Now this lines up exactly with what it says in Malachi, where it says, I am the Lord and I change not. We need to realize this. Now, sometimes when you say, when you quote from Malachi and you say that, and then people think back of the Old Testament, and they think, well, you know, God killed people and he put sicknesses on people and he did all these kind of things. Well, what we have to realize is what he is saying is very simply this. His nature, his character never changes. And even in the Old Testament, it said that it, it, it never pleased God to have to afflict men, to have to do these things. It never pleased him. He never wanted to have to do it, but because he is also a God of justice, there were times when he had to. That's what makes the new covenant, this new testament that we're in, so good. It's because now God gets to treat us like he wants to, not like he had to under the Old Testament. And so in this new testament, God gets to treat us the way his basic nature and characteristic would allow him to. And so we need to see this under the Old Testament or the Old Covenant. Uh, God had to treat people as fallen man, as sinful creatures. He does not have to treat us that way now because of Jesus. And so we want to uh, realize that when it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, if we look at Jesus and we see what he did, and the only place you can really see what he actually did is, in, of course, in the four Gospels. you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you go back and study those, he went about, according to Acts 10.38, Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So the reason he went about healing everyone was because God was with him. And that meant that the Spirit of God was with him, and that meant that Jesus was living out God's will, his nature, his character. All of that was lived out through Jesus. And in Jesus is the first time that we actually see the fullness of God displayed to man. And in all that time, we never see Jesus putting sickness on anybody, uh, even leaving sickness on anybody. We, every time he dealt with anyone that was sick, he healed them, he set them free, because that was his will, that was his nature. And, and yet it wasn't just his will, it was the will of his heavenly Father, because he said he only did those things, number one, he always did those things which pleased the Father, but he said he also only did those things which he saw the Father do. And, and you know, it's sad, and we're going to talk about that particular scripture at some time, but just let me add in here now quickly. When it said that he only did what he saw his father do, he, he did not see a vision of the father coming down and healing a blind person, and then he went over and did it. That's not how it worked. He saw his father in the word. He saw his father in the scriptures and what, God, what was said about God, and all he did was he went about doing what he saw and what he knew his father would do if he were there in his place. And so we need to realize because the way that Jesus ministered was he ministered in the Father's stead, in the Father's place. If the Father were there, he would do it. But since Jesus was there representing him, then he did what the Father would do. And now it's come down to us where we are now here in Jesus' stead, in his place. And now as we go about, we are to do what Jesus would do in that situation has nothing to do with your quote-unquote anointing, your gifting, your none of that. You are representing Jesus. We are ambassadors of Christ. So you go about doing what your master, your Lord, Jesus would do. And what would he do in that situation? You know, a few years back we had the big, what would Jesus do? And the sad part is, they talk about every kind of good work except healing the sick, except setting people free. It was always just being nice and being kind, which are always good and definitely a part of the nature of God and the nature of Christ. But we have to realize if you're going to do what Jesus would do, then you're going to heal the sick because Jesus believed in healing. He believed in what his father wanted for those people. He saw people as oppressed prisoners of war 
and he went about setting them free and everyone he dealt with, he healed. He didn't leave sickness on anyone. He didn't add sickness to anyone. He didn't say, well, it's okay. Just keep your sickness. God's teaching you something. He never did any of those things that we so often hear preachers say that we're supposed to do. And so we need to realize that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he healed all then, he healed all today. If, and, and he will heal all forever. It's just that simple. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. You just need to get settled down into this. You need to take this word into you, study it out, look at it, and see the goodness of God. And that in itself will cause you to change your mind and draw you closer to God. So, in looking at this, we want to give these two scriptures, and then we'll get over into the major topic today, which is uh, we're going to talk about why Jesus healed. And so we're leading up to that. So first one is, what was it? Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, that is just as simple as you can get it. Just straightforward. It's a statement that stands on its own. And then the next verse, which I wasn't going to get into, but I am going to go ahead and read it to you very quickly. Verse 9 says, Be not carried about with various or diverse, or diverse as we would say, and strange doctrines. So right there, right after it says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it says, listen, remember, he's always the same. Don't get carried about with some weird doctrine that says he's different or that he wants to do it this way or he's going to do it this way. You know, we see so many things in the, in the church today uh, carried out in the name of Jesus. And we have to remember <clears throat> everything that we do in his name, he would have... I should say it this way. The only things we can do are things that he himself would do. We need to remember and not get strange and not get off into tangents or on this peripheral thing or that thing. And, you know, there's so many ways that we hear people getting healed today. And we're always glad anytime someone gets healed. But we always want to make sure that when people get healed, the glory goes to Jesus, that it goes back to the Heavenly Father, that it goes to them, that it goes to God, and that it doesn't go to a man. And it doesn't go to angels. It doesn't go to a gift or anything else because I've heard people talk about uh, a particular person who has a, a ministry where they go around and play the piano and people in the audience get healed and different things. And that is wonderful that people get healed. But the sad part is, especially one of the main healings that takes place is that people, uh, now I haven't seen this. I've seen some videos and things, but I haven't been present. But the... Uh, reputation or report of that meeting is that as this person plays the piano, uh, people that are uh, vastly overweight actually lose weight. Uh, literally, their clothes almost fall off of them because of the weight they lose in an instant. And, and it's a miracle. And apparently it happens. And, and like I said, I hadn't been in those meetings, but everything I've seen about them leads me to believe that they are true. Uh, but I can't testify personally because like I said, I haven't been there. But the problem with that kind of thing is, and, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying what we have to watch for. If, you're, if you want to go get healed that way, that's fine. Go get healed that way. But give the glory to God. Give the glory to God. Don't give the glory to a person playing a piano or playing uh, you know, a harp or you know, whatever method they use. And there's so many different things that people use. Uh, you know, that, that they'll say, well, I have an angel with me that as I preach, the angel's going to go through and touch people. And people get healed. And, you know, and, and like we said, we're glad when people get healed. Just give the glory to God. Don't give the glory to an angel. Don't give it to a man. Don't give it to a ministry. Give the glory to God. That's the main thing. Christianity is about your connection to God. And He's the one that receives the glory. So just, we just don't like to get caught up in tangents or in these little uh, fads that come around. We just want to stay on the Word of God, stay on the Word of God, not limit God. You know, not, not just, well, it's got to be this way or no way. We're not saying that. We're just saying there are certain ways that God said to do things, and we do them that way. If things happen differently and there are certain giftings, that's wonderful. People say, well, if, if some of those things aren't God, let's just say they weren't God. If they weren't God, how are people getting healed? Well, it's very simple. Uh, for lack of a better term, and for a term you'd probably be familiar with, I would call it the placebo effect. It is because generally whatever you have faith in will work for you. And if you've heard stories and heard testimonies of people that were healed while a person played a piano or played a harp or a saxophone, and there's been all of the, I've heard all of those, then 
automatically, if you have faith in that, you think, well, other people are getting healed this way, so if I go this way, then I can get healed that way too. So if your faith is in that, and you can release your faith when you're there in those meetings, you'll be healed. Why? Because your faith is in God, in the fact that God is using that person. So that's fine. And I'm not saying that, uh, you know, that we shouldn't do these things. There are certain giftings. There are certain ways that people operate. And the Bible even talks about diversities of operations and differences. So there's not a problem with that. I'm just saying, if and when you're healed, remember who gets the glory. It's always God. It's not the person laid hands on you. It's not the person that you know, plays the instrument or whatever. We're all just instruments of God. So give the glory to God. Now, I know I've taken a little more time on that than I meant to, but I think it was important to do so. So the first thing is, first scripture, Hebrews 13, 8, that it, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now go with me to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And we'll read another scripture to you. We're going to look at, and there's always so much here, it's hard to figure out what we're, where we're going to start. But I want to start about, let's start at verse 14. We're just going to read two verses, verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now that profession means to profess something. It's not talking like a profession as far as a job or a vocation or career. He says, let us hold fast our profession. Now, another translation, and even maybe a better translation, is one that says, let us hold fast our confession. In other words, knowing that we have this high priest that is in the heavens, and that our high priest now is Jesus, the Son of God, then let's stand firm and let's keep our profession of faith. Let's keep our confession of faith. Let's say what we're supposed to be saying, and let's stand firm and only say what the Word of God says. And essentially, that's what it's getting down to. And, and specifically here where it says, let us hold fast our profession, it's talking about your confession that Jesus is your Lord. That's the main uh, aspect here of this verse. And so we want you to realize that we have a high priest. We have a great high priest, the greatest, the, the number one that all the others were supposed to be aspiring to be like. Well, now we have this great high priest. He is in the heavens, and it is none other than Jesus, the Son of God himself, and we know that this, because we have this high priest being Jesus, that we are to maintain and keep our profession that he is our Lord. That means he owns us. That means that we do what he says. That means that we obey his commands. That also means that because he owns us, he takes care of us. That means he is our doctor. He's our provider. He is our, 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 our as they, in the old English or the old uh, Elizabethan English, they would say our succor which means he's the one that comforts us. He's the one that takes care of us. He's the one that draws us to him to comfort us in times of trouble. He is everything to us. And, then, and that's, that is our profession of faith, that he is the Lord and that he is our Lord. He owns me. He takes care of me. He feeds me. He provides for me. He heals me. He keeps me well. All of these things are, are included in our profession of faith. Now, let's move on. Look at verse 15. Now it draws, it draws a uh, contrast here, and it says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Now notice you'll see the double negative there. So what he's saying is, we have a high priest which can be touched with our infirmities. So the way the King James reads it, it says, We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So in other words, what he's saying is, listen, we don't have a high priest that is sitting high and lofty and is so separated from us that he doesn't feel what we feel, that he hasn't gone through what we go through. But the reason I'm bringing this out here is one specific thing, two things. Number one, uh, Jesus Christ is the same. He's never changed. He's always been the, cha he's always been the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, also we know that he is our high priest, and because he's our high priest, then he can be touched with our infirmities, and he's not a high priest that's off distant and, and isn't involved in our affairs. He loves us. He, his thoughts are toward us. He cares about our every day and what's going on, and because of that, he is touched 
by the feelings of our infirmities. Now, the word infirmities here is the Greek word asthenia, and it means literally weakness, uh, feebleness, frailties. It is sometimes translated sicknesses and diseases, or at least sicknesses and ailments, but it has to do with an overall aspect of he feels what you feel. When you're sick, he knows how you feel when you're sick. Whenever you are downcast or, or depressed or feeling sad, he knows not just that you're feeling sad, he knows what it feels like to feel sad. He knows what you're going through. He is joined with you in your sufferings. And, and the reason he is joined to us in our sufferings is because we have identified with him in his sufferings. He was whipped and crucified and buried. And when he was crucified, we were crucified with him, the Apostle Paul said. When he was buried, we were buried with him. But glory to God, whenever he was raised, we were also raised with him. And we were seated with him in heavenly places. So we are right there with him. He feels what we feel because we have entered into what he felt and what he went through. So I want you to realize now, I hope you're getting this whole picture. First off, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Here it says he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That means he went through and understood what we go through and he feels what we feel. So when we hurt, he hurts. He feels that and he knows it. Now, now because of that, now I want to take you to another passage of Scripture. You can read this in uh, Matthew chapter 9. Well, actually, we're going to go through several. But um, I want to pick up first off in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. It starts out by saying, And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes... He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now notice, he ordained the, his co-workers because he felt compassion on the multitude and he knew he needed help. He needed more laborers. So not only did he heal every sickness and every disease among the people, but then he looked around and said, there's too many, I can't reach them all. And so he ordained another 12 at that point, and later on even another 70, and he said, you go and touch the ones I can't get to. That's what he was sending them out. Now, why did he do that? Well, first off, we need to realize the reason he was healing the sick was because of compassion. I'm going to give you several other scriptures. I'm not going to read them all right now, but I want to give you uh, scriptures to look up and so that you'll get involved in this. We would even say invested in it a little bit for your own healing. If you're needing healing, you need to dig these out. And now we just read to you Matthew 9, 35 through chapter 10, verse 1. But if you, and again, don't look at these up right now. We don't have time. But in Matthew chapter 14, verse 14, uh, the sick multitude was healed because of compassion. Jesus healed because of compassion. Now, what does that mean? That means that he felt what they were feeling. He moved in to, to literally feel the pain, the hurt, and see the sickness and the disease. And he said, this is not God's will. And because of compassion on them, he, he healed them. Now, it's, I, I would challenge you. Any time that the Bible mentions why Jesus healed, right? Not just that he healed, but every time it mentions why he healed, you look up why. Every time it will say because of compassion. Every time. Now, that in itself says something. Why? Because compassion is part of his nature. He is a high priest that can be touched by the feelings of your infirmities. He has compassion. He enters into compassion uh, concerning your sickness or disease. He knows what it feels like. He bore those things for us on the cross. And now especially he knows that you should not have to bear it because he already bore it for you. He wants you free. But he, Now, here's the point. He healed because of compassion. Now remember the other scriptures. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. 
What does that mean? That means that today, he is, in, in Hebrews 4.15, I'm just reminding you where we read them, that he is a high priest that feels what we feel. And because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he still has compassion. He still has compassion on the multitude of sick. And if you're part of that multitude, he has compassion on you. And because of that, he heals you. Don't think in terms of your faith toward him. Because then you're judging his actions based on how you feel about yourself and how much faith you have. And I want you to realize, put your faith in his compassion. Put your faith in his love for you. If you understand that, you will realize that his compassion will completely overwhelm any faults, failures, you know, sins, any of that stuff. God healed, Jesus I should say, healed sinners while he was on this earth. And he's still healing sinners. He'll still heal you no matter what your mistakes have been. He will still heal you because he loves you. He feels for you. He feels what you're going through. Just give it to him and say, I know you're a high priest for me. You are my Lord. And because of that, regardless of what, how I've messed up, I know you want me free. So I receive my healing from you because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then just begin to thank him for it and begin to worship God and watch your body change. God will set you free. He's already paid for it through Jesus and that compassion. Jesus is having compassion on you right now especially if you're going through sickness or disease or any kind of ailment. His compassion is towards you. He has touched with, the, the, with your infirmities, and he has compassion for that, and he wants you free. So just give it to him and receive his life and freedom. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that your word is absolutely true. I bless your holy name, and God, we thank you that you are always the same, that you change not. And we thank you that your son is exactly like you. And, you. and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because of that, because of his compassion, we are healed and made whole. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you right where you are. If you are sick, if you are having pain in, in spirit, soul, or body, anything that is wrong with you right now, spirit, soul, or body, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ has paid to set you free. So in Jesus' name, by, as, as his ambassador, as his spokesman, I speak to you now. I grant your request for healing. And I say in Jesus' name, be healed now. Right now. Begin to do what you could not do. Take a deep breath. Open that eye. Take that patch off that eye and look through that eye that doctors have called blind. Breathe deep. Breathe with those lungs that they say were damaged. They're not damaged. They're healed in the name of Jesus. Be free. Get up. Move. Do what you couldn't do. If you couldn't move, maybe you were bound to a wheelchair or something. Get out of that thing. Stand up and dance around before the Lord and just worship in Jesus' name. So be it. God bless you.